My grandmother uh, was a chronic schizophrenic, spent her uh, entire adult life in institutionalized, and as part of that, and by the way, 93 years old is when she died, so an entire uh, lifetime almost. So what I can say is, without a doubt, we have made major strides in treatment of mental illness and addiction disorders. Uh, yes, we have a lot of work to do, but believe me, uh, compared to early times in this century, we've, we've really made uh, dramatic progress. So Parity for Mental Health and Addiction Treatment has really been a long journey with uh, certainly many twists and turns. We've come a long way, but we have so much more that we need to do, and we all know that. Uh, Minnesota has clearly been, however, a leader uh, in terms of ad, uh, uh, advocacy uh, from the political realm and service delivery. Uh, and, you know, thanks to everyone here for certainly the passage of the Wellstone Dominici uh, Mental Health Parity and Addiction Equity Act. Uh, it's truly been a milestone. And we clearly need that final rule, but uh, certainly what I can say is from a health plan perspective that uh, you know, from recovery and, and service delivery, um, you know, complying with that act has been, that part at least been the, the easy part uh, with, with that, that whole issue of the, of the coverage piece. So what has been much more difficult has been, you know, the, the details. Um, and certainly we have interim rules and, and uh, anything that comes from Washington uh, with rules, whether they be interim or final, uh, believe me, uh, the complexity is, is tremendous and it's always a difficult thing to uh, implement. Um, but what I can say is that uh, without a doubt in my mind, it has led to better care for people with mental health and substance abuse uh, and, and also on the medical side. So as a Parity Act, it, uh, it, it, from a health plan perspective, you have to examine all of what you're doing. And I, I really do believe that it has led to, to better coverage, better coverage and better care on, on the medical side. So the next chapter uh, in healthcare reform is uh, implementation of the Affordable Care Act. And um, again, this will provide substantially better coverage overall, uh, covering millions of more people than have been covered. And so that is a major stride uh, and will make a difference. And obviously we have to make sure that, uh, you know, from a parity perspective that, um, you know, we, we cover equally. So we've also made uh, major progress in our system reforms here in Minnesota, and, um, and particularly from the standpoint of integrating that medical care and mental health care uh, that we need to continue to work on. We need to certainly uh, reduce fragmentation of care, lack of coordination, and people falling through the cracks. We know that still happens. And, uh, you know, not to mention the work to reduce the stigma as uh, so many of the speakers have uh, articulated. So Minnesota is better than most states, but that's not good enough. We need to continue on our journey. The key will be to continue to talk with one another, and I think that's really important. So, you know, nothing to take away from a final rule that's important in terms of accountability, but when it really gets down to it, here in Minnesota, we have a history of collaboration history of providers, health plans, uh, consumers, advocates, uh, people, politicians, sitting down and talking and coming up with the right way to do things and improve uh, what we're doing. So 
in my estimation, that continues to be the real key, is that kind of conversation that we need to have. Uh, and then continue to work together to improve the care system. Um, so again, we have that tradition here in Minnesota. I think we have the leadership. Uh, we need to get it done. <laughs>